Hello and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the RDA. This is your Diego Delo match um, statistics and analysis against the West Ham game in which I thought he was really immense. You know, I think I did end up. Did I end up giving him out the match? No, I didn't. I gave De Gea man out the match. But he was. I said he was runners up. Yes, I said he was runners up. But I just gave it to De Gea because um, yeah, I feel like Delo has definitely been getting a lot of praise from me deservedly. Let's let, let's take nothing away from him. Definitely deservedly. And um, yeah, I just wanted to, to give it to someone different because I think the week before that, Delo was Papa's. Was he my man of the match again? He probably was. He probably was my man of the match again that week. So for Sheriff, man of the match, and then West Ham now, man of the match. He's been in lightning good form. He's been in lightning good form. Apologies for no graphics, but like I said, um, sadly, I, I can't use them anymore. I just can't use them anymore. But uh, yeah, I gave him a, What did I give him? Did I give him an 8 yesterday in the match reaction? I think I'm using software score for the, all my stats and everything. But they gave him an 8.2. Obviously, paid the whole 90 minutes. No goals, no assists. Um, five clearances. Three interceptions. Which doesn't seem like... It doesn't seem like it... It's like what I'm basically I'm trying to say is um the interceptions is low. Uh, in my head, I thought Diego Delo had a lot more interceptions than that, but um maybe a defensive header doesn't count. Uh, tackles four was not trouble passed at all. Crown jewels one five out of six, seven. Aerial jewels one two out of two. And I can definitely tell you that those aerial jewels are definitely defensive ones because there was multiple times yesterday in the game where the ball was crossed in from the West Ham. Um, uh, flank into the box and the low just headed away calmly it was one of the major positives those headers were equally as good as David De Gea saves you know they were match winning headers because if he didn't do that Skamaka would have had one and Tony would have had one and we were going to be in quite some trouble possession lost only 11 times uh, he was fouled he uh, gave away one foul wasn't fouled at all touches 59 accurate passes 24 out of 31 which is 77% pass accuracy which um, some would say is pretty, uh, well, some would say is lower than what we expect. But I think the whole team in general yesterday with the West Ham game, you know, the passing wasn't good. The passing wasn't good. And I can't remember the last time, bar that Sheriff game, obviously, where we had a high passing accuracy. But it wasn't really quick passes. It wasn't really always, uh, how can I say, progressive passing. It was just sometimes side to side, you know, we had a lot of the ball, we had a lot of time. So we can take our time and make sure the pass is accurate. Whereas... You know, when I watch other teams, I don't know if you guys feel the same, but when I watch other teams, it could be any team. It could be a Palace team, or it could be a Leeds team, or whatever it is. I feel like other teams still pass better than we do, and use the ball better than we do, in terms of how quick they do it. Like, if West Ham have to counter-attack and transition and, or move the ball quickly, they can do it. And they can do it quite accurately at times. Yes, it's not consistent, but then definitely when you watch the higher caliber teams, the Cities, the, uh, Liverpool, maybe not so much Liverpool now, but, you know, the higher teams... They really do move the ball quickly and accurately. And I feel like United, when we try to do that, um, it's not as accurate. But um, yeah, I sidetracked there a little bit. But um, back to Delo. Key passes, four, four key passes from Diego Delo. Like I said yesterday, at times, it was almost like he was playing as a central attacking midfielder. His position was very advanced. Um, crosses, which we need to see more of. He had, it, he had four crosses in the game of two, which were accurate, so 50% crossing accuracy. That needs to improve. That needs to improve. That needs to improve not for, just from the low, but as well from Luke Shaw. I think recently we have definitely gotten better in terms of how many crosses we put into the box and how accurate the crosses have been. But our fullbacks need to do it a lot more often. There's too many times Ronaldo makes a run or Rashford even now makes a run, and we just refuse the ball to put it into the box. You know, United used to. That used to be United's bread and butter. Whip the ball into the box and score a goal. It's still effective to this day. Because there's nothing much you can do about a great cross that just lands on the attacker's head or foot. You know, there's nothing you can do. The attack will just slot it away, you know. And personally, it's like I said, um, it is my favorite type of goal to score. So we need to improve on that. And I think we will. And hopefully we'll see those numbers whenever we have to do this again. Higher and more accurate. Long balls, you attempted four. Got all four accurate. So 100% there. No complaints, no shots on target. You'd expect maybe um, maybe a one shot here and there. Might not be on target, but maybe at least in a shot for the low. But yeah, no shots were attempted. Um, shots blocked, he only blocked one. And he only got... He went for one dribble and won the one dribble. Um, anything else there? Nothing else. Um, you guys won't be able to see, but the heat map from Diego Delo, It basically looks like 
he has sat on David De Gea. If you go look, you can go look on Sofa Score. Anyone go look Sofa Score, West Ham player player ratings, Diego Delo. His heat map is on De Gea. And I can tell you now, that was towards the end of the game where he was heading the ball away for sure. And also, I think it just shows how much of a lack of Maguire there is there. Because that's supposed to be Maguire's side as well. And Maguire is so weak and so slow that the low, instead of being like as far right as we'd like him to, to hold the worth or, and forward, he's very much almost like a right center back because he has to do his job and Maguire's job. So I think that's why it was so deep. So it was either it was on David De Gea or it was far right, basically hugging the touchline. And there's a few blobs here and there in the center attacking midfield role, like I said. But um, yeah, very good from Diego De Lowe. Massive improvement. Uh, especially under Ten Hag, I must say, Diego Delo is a player who has always really been spoken about at Manchester United. People always were questioning, is he going to be good enough? Will he ever be good enough? Ali didn't want to really give him the chance. Ralph kind of did give him the chance as well, but not too much. You know, Aaron Basaka still played the games here and there. Under Ten Hag, he's definitely Ten Hag's main right back. And I believe the stat was Diego Delo is the only Man United player to start every game. I believe that was that the stat. I think it might. I stand to be corrected, but I believe somebody. I think the commentator said Diego Delo was the only Man United player to start every single game this season for United. So that's very impressive in itself. And I don't blame Tenak. He's been really, really good. But yeah, I think the only improvement I'd ask from Diego Delo is the crosses into the box and the quality of those crosses. Other than that, it's been really, really good. Um, but yeah, that's all from me. Do smash a like on the video, do subscribe if you are new, let me know what you think of Diego Delo recently and as well as more recently in the West Ham game. But I shall see you all very soon, goodbye.